we are now going to look at mechanical energy. So I always, when I'm in class teaching my students, I always introduce them to mechanical energy as follows. So let's say we have a ball on top of a building and that ball is not moving. What type of energy does that ball have? You have two choices, either potential energy or kinetic. Well, kinetic energy is energy due to motion, speed. Potential energy is the energy an object has due to its height. So if this object is not moving, then it has potential energy. So we're going to say potential energy. And let's say that the potential energy is 100 joules. Okay, so that object has 100 joules. And so let's call this position A. Okay, so it's got 100 joules of potential, zero kinetic, and so the total is 100. Let's say it falls to point B, which is over here. Now, as it's falling, the potential energy would become less because the higher you are, the more, or the higher the object is, the more potential energy it has. So the lower down it is, the less potential energy it has. So let's say it's got 30 joules of potential energy. Now, that means the kinetic energy would have to be 70 so that the total is still 100. And then the split, split, split second before it hits the ground, the potential energy would go to zero because it's got no height. The kinetic energy would be 100 and the total energy would still be 100. This only works in an ideal world where there is no air resistance. That is very important that you understand that. So if there is no air resistance or if we're moving on a slope, if there is no friction, then this happens. We can say that the total energy stays constant. Now, what is that total energy? Well, mathematicians and scientists realized that they're always using potential and kinetic energy together, and they're always adding it together. And so that is mechanical energy. And so that's a key point that you need to take away, is that mechanical energy is kinetic energy plus potential energy. Mathematicians and scientists were tired. I mean, imagine these guys talking at the office. Hey, bro, can you please tell me what the kinetic energy and the potential energy of the object is? That's just tiring. You're much cooler if you can just say, hey, bro, what's the mechanical energy? You might even call it mech-e if you're that cool. <laughs> okay, so I'm just playing around. But the point is, is that that is mechanical energy. Now, another important thing that we observed was that mechanical energy will be the same no matter where you are, see we had the total was always 100, as long as there's no air resistance or friction or any other force. Like imagine while this ball is busy falling, someone falling from the sky, a bungee jumper, catches onto the ball at B. Well, that's going to cause B to move faster than what it should. And so this energy would start increasing. If there was air particles in the way, such as we are air resistance, that would slow the ball down. And so this number over here, this 100, would start slowing down. So if there's applied forces, the number goes up. If there was air resistance, that number would start going down. But the point is, is that the number is changing. It will only stay constant when there is no friction, no air resistance, and no applied forces. By the way, what is the only force acting on the object if there is no force such as air resistance and friction? Only gravity, right? And so later on, we're going to start talking about gravity as a conservative force. Because when gravity is the only force acting on the object, then its total energy stays the same. If you have friction or air resistance, then that number, the 100s, changes. And so those types of forces are called non-conservative. There we have it. Friction and applied force, that's called non-conservative because it doesn't conserve the energy. And so guys, I hope you have taken away the most important things from this video that mechanical energy is the same as potential energy plus kinetic energy. Then, if there is no external forces such as friction or air resistance, then the mechanical energy stays con the same. It's the same everywhere. If there is applied forces or friction, then the mechanical energy becomes either less if there's friction or it could even increase if there's an applied force. Thank you for watching.